So we're going to take a look at the round function. And as you can see, we have the original numbers in column B, the number of round places in column C. So we have different types of numbers going on. And then the resulting values will be placed in column D. To get started, please go to cell D4. We're going to go to D4. And then we're going to come up here to the ribbon. We're going to activate the formulas tab on the ribbon. So we're just going to come up there. Now, does anybody know where the round function would be? What kind of function is this? Is it under here? Or is it under door number two? Which one is it? <laughs> I don't know, like we're playing a game show. What do you think? I think it's under format, format, number, under home. Oh, under home? Okay. I mean, it could be. I mean, you could actually get to it that way. Matter of fact, see this auto sum button here? Look at this. See the bottom one? It's not listed here, but more functions is. Everybody want to try it this way? Sure, why not, right? What do we got to lose? More functions. I'm just going to type round. Round. And then after I type it, I'm going to click go. And there is the round function. Now remember, help is always there. Um, if you're totally foreign to this, it uh, gives you a really good description the round function rounds a number to a specified number of digits and their example if a1 contains 23.7825 and you want to round the value two decimal places you can use the following syntax equals round a1 comma 2 there's the end result 23.78 interesting so they give you some other examples there you can even copy this stuff and play around with it. Was well, this information helpful? I'll give them a yes. Uh, you're, you're asking for too much now. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> All right. So there's the function round. Rounds a number to a specified number of digits. So we click OK. So we have two arguments. Number. That's the number you want to round. That's an easy thing, right? What cell is that? Yeah, not to sound redundant, it is B4. You are right. Now, number of digits. I'm just going to have you click on C4. Okay? There's your answer at the bottom. And then you just click OK. Any questions on that? Rounding it off. All right. So can I just copy this down to the adjacent cells? Will that cause any issues? Let's find out. Looks okay. Let me just look at the numbers. You got a negative one here. You got a zero there. And you got a positive here and a positive there. Now, I like your example where you said you had rounded it for like the cents, you know, rounded off the cents and, you know, just rounded off numbers in general. So that's really good that you actually use that. All right. So I'm not worried about these worksheets here um, too, too much. Um, but let's take a look at this financial FX um, worksheet. Now, this is something that you may not use at work, but outside of your own profession, you just might. These are known as financial functions. Now, one of them is called equals PMT, not equals PYT. That's a pretty young thing. That's not even a, a thing in Excel. But we all know what that that is about, right? Michael Jackson's uh, PYT. <laughs> so here we have um, the principal amount. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We have the interest rate, and then we have the term, and then we have what is called like, uh, like an annual payment. Uh, we have a monthly payment. Now, did you notice when you hover your mouse over, what is that, B11? Let's, let's take a look at that. Most interest rates are annually based. To represent monthly payments in your formula, you need to change the term to months, which is multiplied by 12, assuming you're making one payment each month. Excuse me. And you need to show the interest rate on a monthly basis, so that has to be <coughs> divided by 12. Okay? So you can refer to this cell, you know, um, you know if you need to. Um, and again, I'm not sure how likely you are 
you know, to use this. And then we have this other section here for the rate. Future value, present value, payment, your term is 20. But the, the truth of the reality is I don't know what my interest rate would have to be to make that work, right? So you know what you could afford, but what interest rate would I have to be at, right? So why don't we try this? Um, let, let's come up here to, what is that, B11? And the financial function that we're going to use is easy to find. It's under the formulas tab, and you'll see an icon that looks like a green book. It's appropriate, right? Financial. Now, they are in alphabetical order, so we're looking for PMT. Calculates the payment for a loan based on constant payments and a constant interest rate. Okay, so I'm going to click on that. Dialog box opens up. Now, let's pause here for a minute. Okay, we have three out of what? Five that are bold. So we can actually leave these two blank. What I'm going to encourage you to do is start at the last one where it says type. And see how there's a description of each one? I want you to try to read these to yourself. Each one, click in the text box and take your time. The first, I would say the first three are self-explanatory. You all know what an interest rate is. Number of payments, MPER, and then present value. But I'll give you a couple minutes to look them over. And also, help is right here. So if you want to refer to that instead, that's fine with me. So let me just maximize that. PMT. We're just analyzing this a little bit. Now, when they talk about the optional type argument, the number zero or one indicates when payments are actually due. At the end of the period, you could leave it blank or type zero. At the beginning of a period, it would be a one. Okay? Now, the funny thing about this function, um, it includes principal and interest, but no taxes. Okay? or like fees that are oftentimes affiliated with your loans. Make sense? You know, like the DMV, you know, all that other stuff. Um, the thing about uh, this function too, like you want to make sure that you're consistent about the types of units you're going to utilize. Like if you're specifying the interest rate and number of payments especially. So if you make monthly payments on a four-year loan, let's say the interest rate is... 10 or 12 percent then you want to make sure that you use 10 or 12 percent divided by 12 for rate um you know you could use like four times 12 for the nper now if you make annual payments on the same kind of loan then use 12 percent for the rate and four for the n number of payments nper okay now, if you want to find, like, the total amount paid over the duration of the loan, you can multiply the returned PMT value by NPER. And I love the examples that they put in here. So take a look at this sample. We have um, 8%, number of payments, number of months to pay. If you've ever gotten anything other than a car and a house, like rent -A center they're known for this. Yeah, they get you with that interest. They all do, but th that's why they're in the business that they're in. The, the trick is, even with credit cards, if you could pay more than the minimum amount, you've already beat them at their game. Credit score will go up instead of down. Don't just make the minimum. Try to add extra if you can. So anyway, that's a whole other class. Um, so here we have the formula equals PMT. Um, so it's A2 divided by 12, A3 comma A4. So monthly payment for the loan with terms specified as arguments, um, and the end result would be this. So if this is not something you would ever use, um, I wouldn't, you know, give it a second thought, but it's good to know. So I'm going to close that out. Um, but let's give it a shot anyway, since we're here. So let's see the, the rate. That's going to be what? B7, right? And please, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, now, is there anything else that we need to do to this? Not function 4. 
There is no function, but aren't we supposed to like um, divide? Yeah, because you're going to make one payment a month, right? You're not going to fall short, right? That's okay. So we put 12 in there, right? Now, what about the number of payments? What am I putting in there? Uh, what cell is that? B8? Now, what, what else am I supposed to do here? Times 12. Good, good deal. It's a good thing we just discussed that, right? So it's B8 times 12, right? Present value, 14 grand, good answer. So I don't know about you, but I hate seeing this coming out of my bank. But you know what? Reality is that's what's going to happen. It shouldn't be a positive number because you're not putting it in the account, although we want to. No. No, 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 not at all. So it's negative 335.24, and it's got a whole bunch of numbers to follow. So I'm going to click OK, and it's code red. It's not a positive. It's, it's coming out of your savings or your check-in. Does that make sense? Pretty cool. Now, I, I learned something just by messing around. Um, I got to show you this. This is actually pretty neat. Um, let me see if I can remember how I did this. I think it was... Hold on a second. I think it was this way I did it. I put like a negative... Oh, gosh. <laughs> I was just messing around with it. So I go in here. I don't know if I should do it on this. I forget where I... Whoops. I forget where I did it at. Oh, wait. I think I figured it out. See my present value? I did like a negative B6. Now watch this. Yeah, I'm putting money back in my account. <laughs> oh, wow. I wish. <laughs> but if you don't want it to be red, if that's like a weird color and you don't like that, then you have to make the update. And all I did was I went to that third argument present value, and I just turned my negative into what we call a positive, but it's weird because I had to use a negative symbol, like a minus. So if you don't want it red, then that's the trick, you know? If this is just like for you and, and it's not related to your job, I think it's kind of good to know. All right, any questions on that? So the rate is, you know, going to be divided by 12. The number of payments is going to be multiplied by 12. Okay. All right. All right. Let's go down to what is that? B22. So we're going to try out another one. Then we're going to get into date functions and charts. So I'm down here on B22. And then I'll be coming back again and we'll be doing the other half of this class because you're only here for a half day, um, half a session. So anyway, um, follow me. We're going to go up here to financial. Remember, it's under the uh, formulas tab. We're going to go to financial. Alphabetical order. Where are you? Right here. Rate. What does it do? Returns the interest rate per period of a loan or an investment. Their example is 6% divided by 4 for quarterly payments of 6% APR. Make sense? All right. And if you ever forget, they give you a uh, description here. So this should be pretty pretty easy for the most part. So what do I put up here, everybody? NPER, number of payments. What cell is that? B20. You said B20? B20. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see. Yeah, that's fine. I'm, I'm overthinking something. Don't mind me. All right, payment, PMT. That's the payment made each period and cannot change over the life of the investment or the loan. All right, good deal. Present value, that should be easy. There's nothing there. <laughs> so let's click OK. So if we were to put a present value in there, that would get rid of this hashtag num. Uh, let's say the present value is 45000 so that means your interest rate would have to be that. Okay. The likelihood of you really using these at work is like on a scale of 1 or 0 through 10. is probably like a 0 or a 1. It depends, you know. Outside of work, you might want to use stuff like this. All right. Any questions on those examples before we get into our last one? 
on this file. This is called the date functions worksheet. All right. Now, date functions, um, let me just add a little text here. There's a lot of them. We're going to focus on a couple. Uh, date functions like equals now, uh, equals today. They're not case sensitive. They're spell sensitive. They don't require function arguments, which is good. So you type them exactly the way you see me on the screen, except for this thing I just did. This would be equals. <coughs> All right. Okay. So we're going to focus on date and time functions.